I once had a dream that I was on top of Minmus in an SSTO that was really, really small and really, really beautiful. And I was bouncing up and down, frolicking down the hill. Is that a dream or is it a reality? Welcome to What the Math. Hello YouTube and welcome to What the Math. In today's video we're going to be constructing a relatively small SSTO using nothing but repair engines and a nuclear power engine. Uh, now the reason I'm using both and not just repair engines is as follows. Uh, unfortunately repair engines are the most powerful at high velocities. What this means is that if I were to use turbojets or ramjet engines, unfortunately their maximum, um, capa oh, not capacity, but maximum power is at lower velocities. In other words, as you reach higher and higher speeds, they'll become less efficient. So at a speed of about 1200 meters per second, neither um, ramjet engine nor the jet engine will unfortunately be enough for you to, you know, to get enough velocity. However, if you look at these guys, if you look at the uh, repair engines at a 3.7 Mach, they actually peak. They have their highest possible power. So this means that you can actually blast these things get to speeds up 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 to 1500 uh, meters per second in in the atmosphere and then they will actually reach their peak so they're they're really really effective at high velocities which means that they make for excellent first stage for an ssto we're not going to be using their alternative mode which is kind of feels like a waste but it's actually because we want to save as much fuel as possible so we're instead we're going to be using nuclear engine we're going to be using um an LV engine, which is basically the plutonium-based nuclear engine, which only uses liquid fuel. So in other words, we're basically just bringing liquid fuel tanks with us. Now, original design I was going for was using the stock tanks, but I, instead I decided to um, use procedural tanks so that I can make a much more beautiful looking model. And this is actually kind of similar to, if you ever watched um, ba Battlestar Galactica, it's sort of similar to the um, to the craft they use in that, in that TV show. Uh, and also it's kind of similar to the the game I'm playing right now. It's called Galaxy. I've, uh, I, I'm going to post a video about this game very soon. It's a pretty awesome game that has a similar uh, sort of a craft to this one. Anyway, so this is what we have so far. Let's launch it. Let's see how it goes. We're just going to make sure that our pilot is Valentina Kerman. And three, two, one, and launch the spacecraft. This is going to be our maiden flight to Minimus using this relatively small SSTO. Now, the one problem I have with this design is that it's a little bit nose-heavy, mostly because of this sci-fi thing I went for, where you have a lot of fuel in the nose and then not so much in the back. So, for that reason, I actually have to wait until the end of the runway before I can safely take off. Otherwise, things get a little bit tricky. So, here we're going to wait until the end, and boom! Ah, we're flying, yay. All right, so I'm going to decelerate just a little bit. And essentially now all we have to do is wait for ourselves to get into higher atmosphere. And then we're going to enable um, our nuclear engine and try to get into orbit. So I'm going to kind of accelerate this part so you don't have to watch the entire thing in real time. And you'll get to see me in orbit. Now after about 10 kilometers I'm going to start leveling out a little bit just so that I can actually use up uh, my air breathing engine to get as much speed as I can. So right about here, we're going to be going at close to uh, one kilometer per second. And we're going to keep pushing ourselves higher and higher, faster and faster. Hopefully things don't explode. It has happened before when I was going a little bit too fast in the lower atmosphere and my ship could not handle it. Uh, now, what I'm trying to do right now is get to at least 1500. I need to see if I have enough area intake. Yes, I do. And once we get that, um, we'll enable our nuclear engine and then the rest of the trip will be based on nuclear engine instead. Uh, Alright, so how is that, how are we doing? Okay, so right now, yes, TWR has dropped below 1, which means that I need to start thinking about enabling my nuclear engine right about... now. Alright, excellent. Now I can actually disable these engines any second. They will usually disable themselves, but I think I can I can possibly safely disable them right about now. And so now we're going to be using only our nuclear engine for the rest of the trip. And uh, basically, uh, well, normally you can even get to 1500 or even higher. This time I only got to about 1400 using the um, repair engines. But this is why you want to use these and not 
um, ramjets or other turbojet engines because these engines are so effective at high velocities. They're crazy effective. Now, what you'll notice is that I don't actually have TWR of one because I only have one nuclear engine here. And um, it's also not very effective at uh, in, in, at, in the atmosphere. So uh, what you want to do is point your nose um, above 30 degrees. So between 30 and, and 50, I think. So somewhere over here, just so that you can both gain altitude and speed at the same time. So here, all we're doing now is essentially just pushing ourselves um, up and a little bit, uh, no, sorry, pushing ourselves sideways and a little bit up so that we're still increasing our apoapsis, but we're also increasing our speed. Um, so I have to make sure that my apoapsis uh, is still increasing, and it is, and I have 43 seconds before I reach it, but hopefully this is enough time for us to get just enough speed uh, to escape the atmosphere. So this is actually the tricky part, but basically if you fly this way, and if you keep uh, blasting your nuclear engine full speed ahead, you should be fine. You should be able to reach the um, orbit. And as soon as you see yourself approaching the 50 number right here, which means that you're going about 45 degrees above the horizon, you may want to pitch down just a little bit just so that you can actually still get orbital speed as well. So my orbital speed is almost 2 kilometers per second. I need about 2200, uh, preferably 2300, so that I can actually get into stable orbit. Okay, apoapsis is now 70, so I'm going to stop my engines and basically finalize my circularization here by blasting them again at the apoapsis. And we are now almost in space, we just have to blast our engines for 67.6 uh, delta V, which will circularize our orbit and will get us into, into space. Uh, the music is already playing because we are technically in space already, and here we go. A few more seconds and I'm gonna finish this orbital maneuver. Ta-da! So we're now in space, so this is officially an SSTO, meaning that it is a single stage to orbit craft, but this is not it. We now still have enough fuel to even go further. Uh, this tank is almost empty, but these two tanks that we used uh, for our repair engines are almost completely full. So we're gonna transfer the fuel from them to this engine and then begin our next maneuver. Okay, so we've now refueled our ship a little bit. We have an almost completely full tank. There's still some fuel left, actually quite a lot of fuel left in these two. And I'm just keeping this for uh, for the sakes of mass uh, and balance. Um, and now we're going to uh, begin trajectory to Minmus. So let's uh, start our maneuver here. Oh, right, excellent. So this maneuver node right here will allow me to use Moon for a slingshot maneuver and will then be able to approach Minmus at a distance of 3 million kilometers. So somewhere around here, we'll actually try to adjust our trajectory. So we'll we'll go for a suicide burn on Minmus, which that will be fun. All right, so we only need to use 950 delta V. I think I'm saving about 50 because of the uh, slingshot maneuver. And this will, uh, we'll, we're going to initiate this in 16 minutes. And three, two, one, and let's start the second stage of this journey by blasting our engines. I think this will take us about three minutes, perfect. Um, so this will be the second stage of the journey. We'll need to now increase our speed by 900 meters per second. We're going to use Moon as a slingshot and then try to get to Minimus that way. Excellent, so we still have some fuel left in the main tank and then there's obviously some more fuel in these side tanks. So let's actually wait for us to get to the Moon and use the slingshot maneuver. Uh, escape from Kerbin, successful. Moon, lunar, lunar maneuver coming up anytime soon. We're actually going to be passing by at about 1.8 million kilometers, so it's actually not even that big of a slingshot maneuver, but if you really wanted to save fuel, you could wait for just the right time for, uh, for you to use this um, maneuver, because then you'll actually be saving, I think, something like, uh, I, would say, I would have to say at least 200 meters per second delta V. All right, so here we're going, to add, we're going to add another maneuver, and this time we're going to try to aim for Minmus. And it looks like we have a direct intercept with Minmus. We're actually going to be crashing on it, which is exactly what I wanted. So just before I forget, I'm going to release my gear because I always forget. Uh, and we're going to wait until this point and then start blasting our engines. Um, this nuclear engine provides more than enough TWR to basically land on Minimus, but I also need to actually refuel myself by putting some fuel here. And here comes Minimus, so tiny, so beautiful and so cute and so green at the same time. 
Uh, it doesn't look green from this distance, but you'll get greener as we approach it closer. All right, so our job now is to basically crash land on Minmus using Suicide Burn. So we're going to warp right here. It's actually approaching us, uh, not the other way around. And I, I believe we have more than enough Delta V to land here and to possibly even explore a little bit because... Um, even though this engineer doesn't actually show accurate readings, I think I have about 1000 Delta V left. Uh, you, uh, the way I learned to calculate it here is basically you look at the fuel and you multiply by two. So here we have about 700 plus maybe about, okay, maybe about 800 Delta V left in total. And it looks like we're going to be crashing on the dark side, which is not as good as the bright side. But you know what? It's better than nothing. So all we need to do now is just wait for this point right here. I'm going to warp to that point and begin our descent. Hello, my beautiful green moon. I'm ready to land on you, so let's get into retrograde position. Um, we're going to blast our engines as soon as we're close enough. But the thing is, I don't think I'll be going relatively fast here anyway, because the gravity on Minimus is relatively low. So all, all I need to do now is get a safe landing. Actually, you know what? Never mind. I'm going to make another maneuver node right here so that I can actually propel myself to a bright uh, to to the light side. I'm going to land on the light side because I don't want to land in the darkness. Uh, so we, we're going to do this again. We're going to blast our engines for 77 meters this way. And that way we'll be able to at least land on the bright on the on the light side. It's more fun. It's you'll get to see things. I'll get to do things and everyone will be very very happy. And we'll still have enough fuel to kind of do that anyway. So let's do it from this position. This will actually increase my periapsis or change my periapsis a little bit. And I can stop now. And at this point, right here, we're going to make another no node. Uh, and this maneuver node will take us down to Minimus. Now, this is fine. This is good enough. Let's land on this little mountain hill thing. And this will be our new location. So we're going to now decelerate in about five minutes. And this will then allow us to land on Minimus. All right, so here we go, here we go, here we go. And stop about now. This is good enough. Excellent. So now let's position ourselves to toward retrograde and keep it that way. And basically, we're now just going to be warping to this point and initiate the landing. Uh, so here, all I need to do is decrease my Delta V by about 150 meters per second or so, uh, possibly a little bit more, because here the gravity is relatively low, so it's actually easy to land. I've tried to land on the moon using this craft, and um, I can land, but obviously not take off. There's just not enough fuel to take off, uh, but landing part is, is not very difficult. Uh, on Minimus, you can land, take off, and return back to Kerbin. All right, so now all we're doing is initiating a suicide burn. Uh, and it shouldn't really take us that long. And look at this beautiful location that we're going to be landing in. This is awesome. I'm going to have to make sure that I land sideways. Uh, not... What I meant to say is I, I land on my, on my gear and not on my engines. Because otherwise my engines might actually get destroyed relatively quickly. Okay, so this is good. Let's watch our... Where's that thing? Uh, suicide Burn Delta V. Here we go. 51. And this shows us the distance. And also we need to look at the surface of this planet. So we have two kilometers to go, about 1900 meters. Uh, it looks like it's approaching us really, really slowly, but it's actually, this is actually hill. So that's, um, it's not really fi uh, 5,600. It's really this, this number here. It's 1500 meters. We can see the rocks now. This is great. And you know what? I think they actually changed the way Minimus looks because I thought it was a little bit more green than this. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just my memories of Minimus have have changed. All right, so here we go. This is the landing part. Uh, I'm not really worried about the fuel at all at this point because I think we have plenty. There's still reserves here, by the way, which will be enough for us to even possibly fly around on the Kerbin.
Excellent. All right. Perfect touchdown. Awesome. Uh, it was a little bit risky, actually, because I was kind of going the wrong direction. But all right. So this is done. Uh, we can now slow down, stop and get out, plant a flag and declare this mission a success. I'm also going to possibly... No, I think I have enough fuel. Excellent. All right, Valentina. Good job. This was excellently done. All right, Valentina, plant the flag. Uh, we're going to make this an SSTO success mission. And the plaque says mission success. Uh, this is a tiny SSTO mission that was successful. So let's hop back to our ship. And actually, let's just use our engines. Uh, there we go. And we're going to return back to the uh, to Kerbin. We're going to try to return back to Kerbin using our um, beautiful tiny SSTO that really has no name yet. But it's the one that uses repair engines and not, not anything else. And easy now. Don't smack into it. Don't smack into it. There we go. Uh, stop, 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 stop. Board. Board the ship. Okay, so let's go back to Kerbin. Uh, I believe we have enough fuel to do everything we need to do. And here comes the takeoff. Or not. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Don't. Don't. Easy now. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, yay. Excellent. Mission success. Okay, so now let's try not to die and return back to Kerbin. Look at how beautiful this flies, even above uh, Minimus. This is awesome. Uh, so what's our apoapsis? It's relatively low still. Let's get to higher altitude. So we're going to try to go directly to Kerbin just by going basically up. And this will hopefully allow us to escape um, Minimus and also get the intercept with Kerbin. Let's see if this works. And this is the final escape stage from Minimus. We only need about 100 Delta V and we still have some fuel in the main tank and also some fuel in the side tanks for us to propel ourselves and to maneuver on Kerbin. Uh, once this is done, we're basically just re-entering atmosphere. And after that, it's, I think it was actually probably the, uh, one of the more dangerous um, parts of this journey because I don't have any um, I don't have any heat shields. I'll have to use my old trick called pancake maneuver where I'll basically be flying. Uh, I'll show you how I'll be flying just so I can slow down in carbon atmosphere. Otherwise, we're kind of possibly in trouble. We might actually be in trouble if we don't do this the right way. So carbon preapsis is, is 58 kilometers right now. And I think this is kind of what I need for me not to die. I'm going to return back to Kerbin and show you the pancake maneuver, which is basically when you fly perpendicular to your vector, vector velocity so that you can use upper atmosphere to slow down as much as you can before you get into the lower atmosphere. It's actually a, it's a tricky maneuver, but it's so far the only way I found without using the heat shields for an SSTO to return back home safe. And here comes our beautiful home planet of Kerbin and OK, excellent. So now what we're doing is this. I'm going to position myself this way and use upper atmosphere to slow down as much as I can because right now we're going at close to three kilometers per second, which is ridiculously high. We may not actually make it back home. Uh, flying engines first doesn't really work with SSTOs that well because your engines will at some point overheat and explode as well. So really the only solution I've found so far is just doing this. Now let's see if this actually works. All right, 3.2 kilometers per second, and we're about to enter upper atmosphere. Let's hope this actually works. I've never tried it at that high of a speed. Normally, I, I'm going at uh, 2.4, 2.6 max. This is 3.2. Crazy, crazy speeds. So basically, what we're doing now is we're using air to um, slow us down in the upper atmosphere as much as we can, because this gives us the highest possible surface area. Unfortunately, the first passage only decreased my speed by about 100 uh, delta V. Not enough for us to re-enter atmosphere. So we might have to do another passage. And this will actually, this is probably the safer bet here. G basically decrease your speed slowly, step by step, orbit after orbit. Because if I were to try to go into the lower atmosphere right now, specifically at around 35 to 30 kilometers, this ship will probably explode. All right, so here comes the second approach. And this time we're actually burning just a little bit. Uh, because we're going to about 48 kilometers. I don't know if this will be enough for us to... No, I don't think it will be enough for us to slow down and re-enter. But you never know. So burning is not good. Hopefully nothing will explode. 
And if things explode, I may have to rethink this design because returning with an SSTO is just as important as making it to your target. And this second approach uh, bled off about 500 Delta V. So we're still not really returning to Kerbin, but we are definitely getting closer to that part. Okay, so I think I'm pretty good now. I just have to cool down my uh, parts that overheated and I can actually see that here, I believe. Where's uh, here? Heat. So some of my parts are at 44, ooh, 40, over 40% 40 of their maximum capacity. So some things might actually start exploding, but I think we're good for now. We're just going to uh, bleed off a little bit more velocity. And I think this is actually, yeah, there we go. Our apps is relatively low now. So on the third approach, I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to re-enter um, atmosphere. And this is the last approach, approach number three. I'm going to just watch my temperature here. Let's position ourselves sideways again and begin our last descent. So this will definitely help us re-enter because we're now are going relatively low. Uh, so apoapsis and periapsis have dropped dramatically. This is actually at 33. And I also need to make sure that I actually point my ship prograde, meaning that I go nose first at an altitude of about 35 kilometers. Otherwise, I may actually explode. It happened before where my ship just explodes because it gets too hot. So we need to watch this button right here and we'll have to press it as soon as we get too low. And as we're descending, there's actually a Northern Lights right there that are making this really, really beautiful. Okay, so actually, let's do this. Let's look at this awesomeness. Look at this beauty. This is amazing. All right, so I'm going to just make sure that my things, uh, some of my things don't overheat above 60% because then I have to start flipping my ship. But I think we're, I think we're good. Um, orbital speed has decreased. Uh, we're now almost below two kilometers per second. The only problem is that I don't know if I'll be landing on the land or in the water. Uh, there's some land here, but uh, there's an ocean coming, so th this is not a really good news. I need to make sure I slow down before then, and possibly, um, as long as I get to that part, I think I should be fine, and I'll be able to land on on a hard surface. You also get stole for a few seconds or possibly a minute, and that's normal. Uh, you just have to learn how to destall your ship, which is usually point your ship uh, downwards. Oh, I can't seem to hit this. Come on. Uh, there we go. Uh, point your ship downwards and then try to blast your engines full speed ahead. Actually, I'm going to distribute my fuel back into the nose because I want my nose to be heavy. So let me just, oh, come on, hit this in, hit this in. No. Oh, so hard. Stop it. Stop spinning so much. Jeez. Okay, just out, out this button. Here we go. This will give us more weight in front. So I should be able to possibly... All right, well done. So my nose is now pointing downwards and I'm just going to be gliding. Uh, let's regain some speed and regain control as well. Find a landing spot. None of them are actually agreeable with me right now, but let's release gear just in case. So we're now going to be gliding and this gliding part is usually the fun part. Fun part of the trip. Uh, okay, we're going relatively fast, relatively low, but as long as I'm not really doing anything crazy, I should be able to land, or at least crash land. Crash landing is also good as long as Valentina survives and walks away from this unscathed. Here comes the super fun part. This is probably the best part of the entire trip. I can also enable my engines just to get a little bit more speed. Uh, okay, so this looks relatively flat. Um, let's just increase our altitude a little bit. Okay, something exploded. That's not good. I hope that wasn't part of me. Uh, all right. Oh, 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 here it comes. Please stand by. We are experiencing technical difficulties. All right, so nothing just happened. You saw nothing. Forget everything you saw. Skies are red because blood has been spilled. Valentina is still okay, though. Anyway, so let's land this thing again. And here we go. All right, excellent. Touchdown. Perfect. Well done. This was actually surprisingly difficult to land, uh, even though I actually thought it would be a little bit easier. Anyway, so thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you enjoyed this video and like this video if you liked it. Stay tuned for more SSTOs and more Kerbal Space Program videos this week. And as always, game you later, guys, and bye-bye.